Hey everybody, how's everybody doing out there? Wow, welcome back to Ready Steady Play in the sunshine! We're playing Destinies! It's right behind me, it's here. It's the new game from Lucky Duck Games. It's the one where you're not solving crimes anymore. Now you're going out into the medieval land and dealing with supernatural MacGuffins! How's everybody doing? This is an app-driven storytelling game that we're playing today. And I thought, I was, I've been sort of trying to figure out how to do this one. I also spent a good amount of time trying to figure out how I was going to live cast the app to my computer so I could live stream it. And then uh, they released the Steam version like a few days ago, so I, now I don't need to do that anymore. But the Steam version comes with all its own problems, but we're going to figure those out. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about the game. I've also got some info here. To share so the game is uh, Lucky Duck Studios and it's I've got I've got I look at this I've solved the problem where is it I hope you guys can hear this oh, it's down here okay I've solved the problem here uh, it's designed by Michal Golubyowski Philip Mielutski Mikhail what she said it's two Polish designers who designed the storytelling game um, you can see I've got it all set up here on the table. Oh, wow. My, what is going on with my camera? I've killed it. <laughs> okay. And uh, by all set up, really, nothing is set up because that's how it starts. We've got a whole tray of minis here, and we've got lots of exciting cards and all kinds of stuff that we're going to discover as we go through the game. So... We've got, uh, we've got the app open here as well. Let me tell you a bit about the uh, the game here. So what it is, is it's a solo, it's one to three players. It takes two to four hours and it's a storytelling game, but it's also competitive. So if you're playing the solo mode, you're playing against the computer. And if you're playing the competitive game, you're playing against other players. There's also an expansion pack that lets you play two teams two versus uh, two. So if you're playing with four, you have to do two teams of two. And essentially the idea is that we're gonna be given a scenario and it's gonna give us some backstory. And then essentially we're gonna be playing as these little miniature characters here, wandering around the world, wandering around the scenario and trying to solve our destiny. So each character comes with two destinies see if we can see the little figures so these are the little figures you might remember this was actually linked to the joan of arc board game that came out a little while ago um but since then it's gone they've gone their separate ways it's no longer linked with joan of arc it was called time of legends joan of arc destinies now it's just called destinies and it no longer has anything to do with that but they still use the same miniatures um in this version of the game i'm sure they'll come up with their own unique miniatures going forward so here's a scary, spooky character that we might encounter as well out there. Uh, and there's a big one in the middle here, and I don't know what he's for yet. I'm sure I'll figure it out. The core set comes with five scenarios here. The Nature of the Beast, which we're going to play today, is a solo scenario in the sense that you play it by itself. So it's a self-contained story, even though it's one to three players. And then the other four are all linked, and they form an ongoing sort of narrative and pres uh, allegedly although i don't know this yet i have played the first three scenarios of this game so i haven't played uh blood and iron or all shall burn yet but uh feast and allegedly the events the outcome of feast and famine will affect the other three the outcome of such as her conquest will affect the next ones and so on so they, there's sort of an evolution there but i don't know how much of an effect things will have i did um i did play feast of famine with my partner and then we played such as her conquest as well and we couldn't really see any direct correlation between the outcomes of the first and second and the we we didn't but we didn't notice any major connection between the two but you know that doesn't necessarily mean anything um so i'll let you know once we get to the end whether or not i felt there was any kind of uh import of data across the different scenarios the game's super straightforward it's really really simple so um it should be fairly chill to play through as well and i'll explain the rules as we go but uh 
yeah so in the in the um in the solo mode there is uh two two ways to play there is so you can see here all the different game modes so you got normal which is two or three players challenger which is solo explore solo and bound by fate which is the four player 2v2 uh, and you'll need another expansion to play bound by fate you can't play that right out the core set so challenger is essentially a race against time where there's actually a ticking clock and it's more difficult and it's alleged that you won't be able to do this on your first play and explorer is lackadaisical it's like just wander around the world figure out what's going on and all that kind of stuff so the game is billed as a a sandbox adventure game um, we're going to do challenger and i'll explain why but first let me give you another little uh, heads up here so the game is billed as a sandbox adventure game which i suppose it is but in the competitive mode it is a race against time uh where the, the clock is really being set by your opponents however there are also events in the world that are ongoing that are also going to incentivize you to speed up and try and get things done so i feel like leanne and i have taken quite a long time to resolve our scenarios we usually manage to do it in I think about 10 turns each, which I think is quite a long time. But um, but also the world is kind of getting... There's, there's some pretty serious events going on that form the main narrative of the game. And these events are escalating as you play. And so there is a real sense of urgency as well. So it's not like Sleeping Gods, which we've just played, where you... I mean, of course, Sleeping Gods has a ticking clock as well, but Sleeping Gods felt relatively relaxed in comparison to something like uh mansions of madness which has a ticking clock which feels very pressured and this which i feel is quite pressured as well particularly because it's competitive ultimately you've got one character card like this that you're going to pick at the start of the adventure and each character has two destinies and these are essentially your objectives for the scenario and you've got to pick one and pursue it relentlessly and if it starts to look like you're not going to do it well, there should be, it should never become completely blocked. Like, it'll never be undoable. But also, I guess if it's still early in the game, you might want to swap to the other objective, especially if it looks like someone else has a similar objective to you, a similar destiny. But uh, there is, so we have encountered a situation where two characters each had one destiny that was the same and one destiny that was distinct. And I did swap destinies in order to pursue a distinct destiny because I didn't really want to be competing for the same sort of uh, quests on the board. Like when I talk about it being sandboxy, the way it kind of manifests is a lot of sort of little quests and things that you're going to want to be doing, trying to realize your ultimate destiny. And if you have the same sort of thing that you're pursuing as someone else, then you will find that you're competing for quests and resources and things like that. So, um, you can it's completely reasonable in fact in many ways if you're both doing the same thing you can more easily utilize information under uncovered by other players because the only secret information is your secret destinies on the back of these cards and that's it all the other information is completely public so you know if you uncover something everybody else knows about it and if they think it's going to be useful to them they're going to want to come and get in on it Mm. swallow of coffee so before we get started this is my i wish i had some text or something to put up on screen here but i'm not that well prepared it's really hot outside and it's a miracle i got here in front of these cameras today but uh spoiler warning so two things about the spoiler warning so i've played through i actually played through this game as a prototype in like 2019 or 20 no 2018 um so many years before it was fulfilled and then when we got the box, I replayed this scenario, The Nature of the Beast, um, again, which was the one I'd done as, in a prototype version. They had fortunately fixed a lot of the issues I had with the prototype, which was great. And, I mean, overall, I played it with Michael from the channel, and we walked away from the prototype having generally enjoyed it, despite some huge major obstacles that had would otherwise have inhibited our enjoyment. I mean, there was a point where the game actually broke and I couldn't progress, like flat out couldn't move on um i mean not really actually 
we worked out that I statistically had to roll um, double sixes on two dice. And so there was it was very unlikely I would be able to progress. So my turn was just roll two dice. It wasn't double sixes. Wait. And so we decided to sort of uh, uh, mitigate that by just telling the app we'd done it, even though I hadn't. Um, but uh, they fixed a lot of those issues. We haven't run into any of those issues now in three games of it, me and my partner in the in the final product. So that is good. But the in terms of the actual sandboxy sort of competitive nature, um, the scenarios are not hugely replayable, uh, I don't think. So there will be some story spoilers here for the nature of the beast. Um, if you're playing the game solo, it actually says that in order to attempt challenger mode, or challenge mode, challenger solo mode, you probably actually need to play it two or three times before you succeed. So the implication is that the timeline is going to be so tight that if you don't have any foreknowledge of the stories in the scenario, you are going to be in trouble. However, because I've played this scenario effectively twice, and the writing I didn't find actually, it didn't change all that much between the prototype and the final product. Um, although it was the only scenario that there was a prototype version of as far as I'm aware, so... They've written a lot of more content for the game, obviously. Um, but they're, but you know, because I have that, that played through this scenario twice now, fingers crossed, hopefully I'll be able to actually pull it off. But we'll see. We'll have some fun anyway going through Challenger. I think Challenger is a better choice for this stream because uh, I it, it will reveal the least amount of information about the scenario. So whatever spoilers we will reveal will be fairly, will be as minimal as possible. Um, I'm also going to take this character, the Noble. He's the only one I haven't played before in this scenario. So I don't know what his objectives are. So we'll have a look at those on camera and figure out what he's going to do. But, you know, you can replay it with the other characters who have different objectives. And then you might find some replayability there. But overall, if you've played a scenario one time and you're playing with someone who's never played the scenario, you're going to have a fairly distinct advantage over them. Um, because you know some of the stories, you know what is and is not worth pursuing perhaps, or where you might want to look for things and stuff like that. So the replayability is low. So if you haven't played it yet, then maybe you want to hold off on watching this stream. But like I said, we're going to be doing minimal spoilers. And if you're planning to play challenger mode, this could actually help you get started. Um, or if you just want to learn the rules, you know, hang out for a bit. A couple of turns probably won't spoil too much. As I said uh, as well, well, we'll spoil the objectives of the noble character. So uh, if you do plan to play it in the future with someone, then you can play the noble character yourself and give them another one. Uh, that would be the best way to mitigate that. But uh, yeah, other than that, that's the that's the best I can do for you guys. There there is going to be some spoilers, and um, you know the the sooner you shut off the stream, the fewer spoilers you will be exposed to. But uh, we all we'll go through some of the rules in a few rounds, and that probably won't spoil a, a heck of a heck of a lot. Um, so with that caveat in mind. Let's get over here to the app and see what's going on. That's not the app, that's my table. Here we go. All right, so challenger mode. It was a dark night in the dead of winter when the terrible howl resounded for the first time. No strangers to wolves, the men quickly assembled a hunting party. The few who returned, bloodied and terrified, spoke of a monster, a werewolf, hungry for human flesh. The townsfolk turned to the mayor, once a famed warrior, but they found his house dark and abandoned. Did he abandon his kin to the mercy of the monster? Or had some other darker fate befallen him? As the beast prowled the woods, many wondered, what does it want? Where did it come from? And most of all, how to put an end to this nightmare? But there were a few who knew their fates were, for various reasons, tied to the monster. And so, the threads of destiny became interwoven for the first time.
exciting stuff. So there's your, your preview. And you're going to want to pay attention to like all this information because a big part of this game is keeping track of the information and understanding what's going on. And also, uh, I guess my YouTube studio wasn't working because I literally just got all of chat come up at once. And I didn't see any chat up until like right now. So uh, hey, Margo. Hey, Hagers. Hey, Brian. Thanks for joining in. Uh, happy Sunday and all that. Thanks for hanging out. Good to see you all here. So you'll see when we start, we pick a number of players. Um, I mean, if you were playing with other people, you'd pick a number. Um, but because we're on solo mode, I'm just picking one. We're going to be the noble because I've played with the other two. And now we get uh, shown uh, what our starting setup is, as well as our starting mini and all that stuff as well. So what I can do is I can come in here. Hopefully we've got a little image down here. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can that. Is that as loud for y'all as it is for me? Wow, okay. Uh, this, for some reason the iPad doesn't have the music working, so it's quite exciting actually. I like the... Uh, I, I like the uh, the music, it's cool. Um, yeah, let me know, uh, I'll, I, we can, that was, that was super loud, I think. Super loud for me anyway. Alright, cool. So. Uh, what we've got here are our starting bits and pieces, so I'm just going to find our starting our starting uh, character here, the noble, in the tray. Here he is. I'm going to focus. Yeah, there he is, our, our nobleman. Tiny little guy, getting ready for his big adventure in the world. There he is. <laughs> Um, so what we can also do is, oh, I don't have the zoom in on this phone. Gosh. Uh. Damn it. I've not got my zoom in function. That's fine. We'll just press on. Um, so we got uh, to do our starting stats here. So I'll show you guys how this works by uh, bringing up my zoom in screen. It's, uh, live editing my streaming software here. Sorry about this. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh no, let's reorganize them alphabetically. This? No. Ooh. Okay. I have a I have a, a fancy function where I can zoom in the table camera, and I've lost it because I'm on a set a setting I had don't normally use. Where's U boot then? This is so unprofessional, I'm so sorry. Okay, if we head over here to U-Boot, maybe this will function better. Let's uh, let's go down here. There we go, at least that's something. So uh, yeah, so we got uh, our board here, and we should have our game somewhere here as well. So, hey, how's everybody doing? I'm not good at multitasking, as you can see. 
There we go. Okay, cool. Oh, the dramatic music stopped. Right, now I can explain what we're doing. So we're setting up our character board. So this is our character board. We start with two white dice. We've got three purple dice, but they're set off here in a supply. They're called effort dice. We've also got one coin that we can spend at some point. What we ha have goes in the little circle. We're also going to put our character card here. So there we are. We're the noble. And now we get to set up our beginning statistics. So you guys can see we have three statistics, intelligence, dexterity, and power, which are here on the app. So there they are, our three stats. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, and put the little wooden pits matching the numbers. So a five and a seven on intelligence. We will have got 11 and a 12 there as well. On dexterity, we got six, eight, and 11. And on power, 4, 8, 11, and 12. So, thus we've set up our beginning statistics. And, exactly, Margo. I would never ignore chat, Margo. Never, ever, ever. It's just, I was, it's just YouTube Studio being uh, difficult as usual. Okay, so now we've got our beginning things set up. We've also got one more note here, which says uh, you're, you could start with a sword. Cool. So if we come back up here, you guys can see I've got a bunch of decks of cards laid out here. These are all the item cards. Uh, they are one big deck, but I kind of break them up by number because they're easier to find that way. On the back of the card, you've got a number that identifies what that item is. So we're looking for card 14. So... That's going to be somewhere in this middle deck here. Do, 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 do. Card 14. There it is. This will be a sword. Because the app told me it was. Okay, so there it is. And you can see all of the items have QR codes on them as well. That's going to be important later on. And they've all got a cost in the top right. That's how much money it costs to buy one in the game. There's a name and then a keyword at the top. So sword, keyword, weapon. That can be important, so you want to pay attention to that. And at the bottom, an ability. Discard means you discard it from the entire scenario. So when you discard something, it's gone from the scenario. And then a function at the bottom. So this says, in a strength test, don't roll any dice and just treat your result as 10. There you go. And so we've got space, actually. Oh, on the bottom of our boards here. I didn't leave myself any space. For five cards so you can see we've got the little uh little triangle spots so you can differentiate your things you can carry five items if you uh would god it's so bright can i turn the exposure down oh, it's too late to fix it i'm so sorry um but if you um if you ever pick up a, a fifth item you have to drop one uh, i can sh oh, maybe i can show you how that works if i don't get to it uh remind me but uh, when you drop an item you actually mark it on the board so that other people can pick it up it's not discarded but uh, you can only carry five at a time, hence the five spots. All right, so we start with a sword. We're a noble with a sword. Grand. Let's press on. Hager says, ah, keywords. I wonder if this game has the keyword tower. Well, if it does, you better believe that I'll find it immediately and flawlessly. All right. Did every player do everything that they should be doing? The answer is yes. Why is this um, not updated over here? Also, why is this so big now? What is going on? Oh, it's because we're on U-Boot screen now. Uh, okay. Uh, hold tight. U-Boot is confused. Uh, streaming uh, software is confused. There we go. Did everyone take their starting items and set their skills? Yes! Game progress is saved automatically. That's fine, we're playing the whole thing now. All right, so now we're gonna set up the starting board. So, the western part of town, the church welcomes all. The town hall is locked and barred. So, let's talk about these land tiles, I suppose. So show me um, this. Right, hold tight. I have to continue. So 
So if you all are wondering why this is such a faff, it's because I set this up to use it with the live streaming from the phone app, and then I decided at the last minute to change to Steam. I'm sorry, okay? But don't worry, we'll keep it together. We're hanging in there. Why is this not the right thing, though? Why is this on the wrong... Okay, well, let's not worry about that for now. Oh, God. Why is it so, <laughs> so sorry? All right. Well, bear with me. Hold fire. We've got this. It is not right. Get rid of that. What I need is to very quickly, uh, quickly fix this other thing. Oh my god. Who you ever wanted to see a uh a look behind the uh the scenes of how uh a stream falls apart real quick? I got you covered. I have got you covered. All right. Um I've got to fix this really quickly because, oh God. All right, here we go. I think I fixed it. Let's, let's find out. Eh. Why is that not on the right? It's not fixed, basically. Okay, here's what I don't understand that I'm struggling with guys. This is not this is this is correct. This is where we're at with the game. So why is this still showing the previous scene? My character is not very happy. He's uh he's a big Oh yeah, the miniature is happy. The miniature looks well pleased with himself, but the character looks really grumpy. Don't know why. What I don't understand is why is this app screen not uh, updating? All right, bear with me here. I'm going to try uh, real quick to fix this again. Terribly sorry for all the technical errors. Okay, we've sort of got a hang of it, but it's not um, still not working quite right. But the point is, we've updated it, so at least now I can show you what the hell is going on. Okay. Right. Get that out of here. Okay, so we're going to put out a land card here. we got a deck of uh, cards. Gray on one side and colored on the underside. So the first card we're putting out anyway, in this case, is card two. So I can show you that it's got a... You keep the cards in numerical order on the gray side. Each card has a little uh, number in the bottom corner, and it also indicates that the top of the card is north. 
So you always want to be setting up the board so that most of the players are looking at north, or at least you always know that the cards are faced in a northern direction. But the first card we put out is, of course, face up on the colored side. So there we go. We've got the colored side there. And we can put our little character on the first face up card as well to show that he's starting there. There we go. And then we can say, and then it tells us a little bit about what's going on here as well. So it says, yeah, why is my face not on that? Where did my face go? My face is always on this. Why do I not have a face now? And you get, you guys can still hear me though, so that's bizarre. Hello. All right, so it says here, the western part of the town, the church welcomes all. The town hall is locked and barred. So we come over here, we press OK. And it says here, in these days of cold and blood, the church is a beacon of hope. So we put uh, down here a priest to indicate that this is the church. We've got this one working here as well, hopefully. Okay, so he goes down on the church there as well. Grand. This is the eastern part of town where the smith and the inn can be found. So you guys can see that this is a uh, this is a grayed out one. So this is a uh, one that we will have to explore as we move through the game. Hmm. I'm not allowed to have a face in this camera either. Hello, I'm back. So we're just looking for 23. There we go. So there's card 23. Over here, the hills by the village where the stone circle stands. Dokey. So that's card 11. So we're going to put. Go through our deck, find card 11, put that out there, like that. All right, neat. The road through the forest used to be much safer. Card 25. So you get a little bit of story with each card as it comes out, and that's sort of, it's useful. It also gives you a little indicator about what sort of is going on there, what might be going on there. Um, we should have read our destinies by now, but we can read them at the start of the first turn, so... Um, that's fine. And finally, card 16 says, A wolf howls somewhere in the meadow. Okay. There we go. So we've got our, uh, our little triptych all set up there. We're ready to start exploring and go off adventuring. And that's fun. Isn't that fun? There we go. Okay. Right. So is it just going to dump me straight into the game? I think it will should just be like yep the beast draws ever closer soon it will be too late to stop it so you got to remember back to that intro where it's talking about the werewolf and all that stuff and all right so it's your turn noble day one refresh an effort die days remaining eight right so i'm basically being that's a challenge mode thing days remaining is a challenge mode thing it's essentially saying this is your time limit use it wisely so this is day one so i've got eight turns to resolve my destiny or else I'm going to lose. That's like not enough time at all. It also says refresh an effort die. You always get to refresh an effort die at the beginning of your turn. I'll explain how those work in a minute. But refreshing an effort die is this, right? So can I turn this off somehow? Do I have that function? No. Okay, apparently I'm not allowed. What we'll have to do is let's actually do this. Okay, so the effort die, these purple die, I told you to put three in a supply. Each character has three. At the beginning of the day, I refresh one by moving it over here to show that I can use it. So if we zoom in here, we can see we've got our, our effort dice all set up there and ready to use. Now the camera seems to have adjusted slightly to the brightness. That's good. OK. For my invader says, hey, Mike, this game looks awesome. How much have I missed? Uh, not a lot. I've mostly been struggling with uh, technical issues for reasons I can't explain, but for those of you who did just drop in now, bear in mind, uh, I have warned about spoilers. This is the standalone scenario. There will be some information um, that uh, I will be spoiling. 
it won't ruin the scenario completely, I don't think, but also it will give you a competitive advantage if you plan to play this competitively in the future. But remember, there are five scenarios in the box, the standalone scenario we're doing now, and then the other four, which are a linked four-chapter narrative, which I won't play on the channel, I don't think, because it would just... Re it would... The only people who would watch that are people who've done it once, at least. Uh, because this really... The game really does feel kind of like a once-through kind of thing. Maybe put it in a drawer for five years, come back to it in the future. Um, okay, so... What we're doing here is we've got eight days to solve this problem. But first we have to look at our destiny. So the destiny is going to tell us exactly how, what we need to do in order to accomplish our task and what our t mission even is. So these are going to be unique to the noble, the noble's unique mission. And each character has two destinies. And the destinies are on the one purple destiny and one white destiny. So the game's going to give you opportunities to talk to people about your destinies, and you're going to use these QR codes. This one's linked to the purple destiny, and this QR code is linked to the white destiny. So when the app asks, you know, and I've got it set up, hopefully, so it'll read QR codes from here on the green screen when asked. But uh, we'll show it the white destiny if we want to know about that, and the purple destiny if we want to know about that. So let's find out a bit more about our noble. You've been branded a coward. While your brothers fight glorious battles in faraway lands, you stay here afraid. Neither commoners nor lords respect you, and it's only a matter of time before you're replaced. But now is your chance! You can slay the beast, become a hero, and not only keep, but improve your standing. So i got two options here. Either slay the beast, find and bring two silver items to the blacksmith so he can make a weapon to kill the werewolf. Or gather a hunting party. Help three townsmen in need to gain their trust. When you are ready, go to the church in the western part of town to fulfill your destiny. Okie dokie. So, that's our destiny. So, remember keywords? Silver is a keyword right there. So, interestingly, um, if you remember what I was talking earlier about having destinies, um, uh, I was talking about like duplicate destinies and stuff like that. I have actually done one of these destinies before, despite having never played this character. So I'm trying to think. That's probably the best choice for me here because, um, well, quite frankly, I've only got eight days and that's not enough time to really do anything. So here's how a day works. So I'm probably going to try and gather silver and slay the beast. Yes, and then I will be beloved by the people and the lords alike, and everyone will make me the new mayor. Okay, so, on your turn, you do two things. You move, and then you interact with something in your space. So, movement has to end on an unexplored uh, uh, space. You can only move orthogonally, and also you don't have to move. But if you want to interact with something in your space, you have to just stay there. You can't move after. So you do up to two movement and then an interact and that's your whole turn, okay? So we'll learn more about interacting in a minute because it's not just like one thing. It's it's It could involve a few steps. But essentially here right now, my only options are thus. We will either talk to this person at the church, which means we're gonna stay here and do nothing else this turn. We'll just talk to the church and then that'll be it. Or we can move into one of these four spaces and explore it, and that will also be that. So now I need to play extremely efficiently because of challenger mode. So let me think about where we get the silver stuff. Okay, I think given that I've started the game with one money, one bright shiny orange coin. Or yeah, well, it's yellow. Um, I will go uh, to the east and seek out the blacksmith who can also forge silver weapons to defeat the werewolf, what with, and all that. So, this is where we will uh, bring back in the game as well, so you guys can see that. A little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go and take my little noble, and we're going to go over here to the east. And so we tell the app, oh, we've traveled to the east. And it says, ah, oh, the eastern part of town where the smith and the inn can be found. Would you like to explore tile 23? Yes, I would. Thank you very much. This part of town houses the inn and the craftsmen's dwellings. Usually it's teeming with life, but now the street is empty. 
flip it face up. So we start by flipping it over like this. Whee! And you can see the pictures even line up. Great. And I'm there. That's me, right in the middle. Okay. And now we get new unexplored tiles. So tile 52 comes out. It says the hanging tree where two roads meet. Okie dokie. Find the right card quick. There it is. You guys can see hopefully down here as well. There we go as I'm setting this up. Um, that's how this works. Okay, so there's the hanging tree. And we've got uh, Wolves Howl. The forest does not welcome you. Okay, so we're going to go to 42. And there it is there. Okay. And up north, we've got card 54. The fields are frozen solid. Okay. So, if you were playing this competitively, you could spend some time wandering around, exploring these tiles, discovering all the different interacting points, and enjoying the story. And I think that's a much preferable way to play. I haven't actually ever played this solo. But the idea of trying to sort of hit my goals as efficiently as possible doesn't seem like the most fun way to play. But that's what I'm doing on stream, because this will reveal the fewest spoilers and still show how the game is played. All right. Here we go. Um, we press OK. It's probably going to tell us what's in here. The inn! The inn is here. So we're going to put a little exploration token on the inn to show that this is uh, something we can interact with, but we don't have a model for it because there's no person there, I guess. So there's the inn. Many find comfort in the inn. Always warm and welcoming. And here's the smith. The workshop radiates heat. The smith is hard at work. So let's grab our smith miniature. Where is he? Uh, um, oh my god, I can't find him, guys. Where'd he go? He's hiding. Come here. There he is. I think this is the right one. Yes. So the smith is up there at his blacksmith's, and we can go and interact with him as well. And... Just, uh checking my chat there okay so the smith is hard at work great oh there's also the mayor's house wasn't there something about the mayor in the opening text scroll maybe we should check out the mayor's house there it is okay neat All right, so now we're we're done populating the tile with our various explorations and everything. So you can see here the new situation. And I can interact now with one of these three things. So I'm going to interact with the smith here because I'm, I've got a, a whole plan that I'm not explaining to you. Hopefully it will work. But uh, to keep spoilers at a minimum, let's go visit the smith. Yes. Okay, so... Ooh. How immersive Smithy got sound effects. Hey, whoa, he's got way more stuff than he had last time. I don't know if he's got more stuff because this is um, a challenger mode or if he, they've updated the app so that he has more stuff. But previously he didn't have so much stuff. All right, so this is a shop. This, you'll get this prompt whenever you visit a shop, and that means this person is a shopkeeper. So I'll now show you how to set up a shop. But bear in mind that um, you won't always get this prompt because most people are not shops. So uh, we need two lock picks, which are number 10. So we'll find the number 10 card. We'll flip those over like that. Put them out on the table. We can uh, zoom in a bit if you like as well. You guys can see me. Cards here. So we've got two lock picks. We've got a two hatchets, card number five. We've got two swords, card 14. I'm actually going through these in ascending order, even though they're not listed that way for some reason. 
So I've already got a sword. I started with a sword, so I don't need a sword, right? So there we go. Two swords, and then a trap and a crossbow. So 16 and 27. So here's the trap. And here's the crossbow. Okay, so as we know, all of these items have abilities on them as well as their costs and whatnot. So here's our crossbow here. It's got a cross in the top right. That's how much we actually have to pay if we want to buy it. We've got our keywords on there, ranged and weapon. And we've got an ability at the bottom. Now this isn't always ability, which means it's a passive ability. And you can also tell that this has a passive ability because the name's in red instead of white. The white items have to be discarded after use, and the red ones are passive in effect, and they'll be triggered whenever they're triggered. So it says here, on the start of your turn, you may increase red, green to decrease red. Now that will seem quite cryptic, but I'll explain how that works in just a moment as well as we progress. I won't go through all the abilities on these items, but we can take a quick look at the trap as well. I'll just mention the stuff that's useful, really, I think. So this says in a green test, or dexterity, obviously the green screen is taking that out. Sorry about that, guys. But in a dexterity test, don't roll any dice. Instead, treat your roll as 10. So this is the dexterity version of the sword, which says the same thing about the strength test. So we've set up our shop. And there's one more important step, actually, when you're setting up the shop. The game comes with all these little pairs of tokens here. So I've got two like this, which are green. That was a poor choice. Hang on. Bear with me. Here we go. So we've got two tokens like this. These are... Come on, they're white, green screen. They're... they're oh, God. Do I have any red tokens? Yes, there's got to be some red ones somewhere. Okay. Uh, these are not the same. Okay, look, the point is, you get two of the same kinds of tokens, and then you put one on the blacksmith to show that, that he has that token, and then you put one over here on the shop to show that the shop is the blacksmith's shop. These tokens are always used for marking item cards that are off the board, but available on the board. So. Remember earlier how I said you might have to drop an item if you acquire five items or whatever? If I were to drop the sword in my space here, I would put the sword over there, I'd drop one of these tokens on it, and I'd put the other token onto the board near my character so that people would know, or just in this space really, it doesn't really matter, the point is, so people know that the, the sword is in this space and they can just pick it up. And you can pick up an item whenever you enter a space for free. But I'm not going to drop my sword because I don't have enough items. There's no point. So, I mean, I have. I don't need to drop the sword. What I am going to do though is uh, go and have a look at what the blacksmith's options are. Okay. So we've got um, the smith is extremely busy. Apart from his regular work, the appearances of the beast has caused many frightened townsfolk to seek out protective amulets and charms. Fortunately for you, he is well versed in working with silver. So we've got five options here. So this is what I'm talking about. An interact action might is just one thing. It's interact with something on the board. But then we've got five options here, and we can choose to pursue as many of these as we like. So I can ask him about my destiny. I can ask him about an item. I can steal something. I can look at his wares, or I can give him a silver item to help craft this weapon that I'm trying to craft. So uh, I don't have any silver. But if I were to ask him about an item, what I'd do is I would, the game would come up with a prompt and I'd show him an item from my hand, and the game would scan the uh, QR code on the item and he'd tell me something about that item. So, that's pretty good. Let's uh, go ahead and try and focus on this a bit better if we can. Especially seeing as this is the camera we're using to uh, read the QR codes. So what I'll do is I'll show you guys. I'm going to ask him about my destiny, and I'm going to... So our, the destiny we're attempting here is slay the beast, because so I kind of know how to do that. Uh, gather the hunting party. Uh, I have some idea about how to do that, but I don't think I can do it in eight days. I'd, be, I'd need a bit more time to figure that one out. So if we want to ask him about slay the beast, we're going to show the camera the white destiny marker. So let's go ahead and ask him about my destiny here. It says, ask him about your destiny. So hopefully... Okay, which camera is this actually on, though? Uh-oh. 
The only thing I actually really want to do is buy from him. So I'm going to buy something from him. I'm going to buy, spend this coin. One coin. My only coin. Oh, actually, I thought it was over here. Um, I shall buy this lockpick for reasons that will become apparent later. But we want to have a lockpick. Okay. Now, if you had more time, you might uh, wander around and sort of discover you need a lockpick. But I already know that I need a lockpick because I need to do this. The blunders of technology, uh, the app's loud. Okay, sorry guys, I will turn the app down. Is that, uh, is that better? Is that too quiet? Um, <laughs> Jan, well, it was working earlier-ish. Now I just need to come up with a clever workaround here. Like I said, I, I sort of had the a system set up and then I changed the system last minute. So, um, in any case, the... We've bought the lockpick, and that's basically all I wanted to do. I just wanted to show him ask. I want to show you guys how Ask About Your Destiny works. But what he'll do is he'll tell you some stuff. And what he'll probably do if I ask him about that one is he'll be like, uh, Hey guy, uh, go find me some silver and I'll make you a weapon to kill the beast. Anyway, the point is I'm going to end my turn. Because I'm actually done here at the smith. Buying the lockpick was it. So now it's day two. And the game will autosave. So I can actually just uh, exit for a moment. And we can just have a little chat while I try to fix this issue. Um, we're back. So I think I managed to figure out a workaround. Um, it does mean that we're going to be using the hand camera to look at uh, cards. So unfortunately, the hand camera is now out of commission for the stream because apparently Windows software just doesn't like to share cameras. But fingers crossed this should be, should be working okay. So we have just entered into the mayor's house. Hey, Jonathan, thanks for joining the stream, buddy. So we got, uh, if we head back over here, we should, um, yeah, so now we're in the mayor's house. It says, the house is eerily quiet. So, this is day two, and just to fill you in on, I had to jump ahead here so I could get the cameras working, but we're on day two. I'm still here in this space. I moved from, uh, the blacksmiths, so I was looking at the, the blacksmiths. I went to visit him up here and up here and now I'm visiting the mayor's house down here so I stayed in the same place and I gave myself a second effort die because I refresh one at the beginning of every day in any case uh, yep so now we're over here and we've just got our second die there as well and that's that's all that's happened so the house is eerily quiet Snowdrifts cover the path and it's clear no one has been here for a few days, at the very least. Both the mayor and his wife disappeared just as the beast showed up. What happened to them? How curious. What a coincidence. Maybe we'll find out. But now, hopefully, if I go over here to open the door... So, you can see here by open the door, there are two icons. The red one means a, you can do a power test if you want. So I'm going to explain how we uh, test our statistics when I get to that. But uh, this also means here we can look around. Actually, we can do a look around outside and I can show you guys how to do a test. This uh, doesn't usually cost you anything. So we can look around outside. And, uh, and oh good, why hasn't the app updated? I don't know what is going on here. Um, so anyway, if we, uh, if we look around outside... What, we'll, uh, what we get is this option here, which is a, a, t a test. So now we have to test our statistics. So I can explain how this works. So what we want to do is we want to come over here and look at our, uh, our player board. And on your player board, you got your three stats, intelligence, dexterity, and power. And your quality in each of the three uh, rows is how many of the wooden pits are as far to the left as possible. So right now I'm not particularly great at anything because I've just got starting stats. But when I test anything, the maximum successes I can get are equal to the number of the wooden tokens. So uh, at the moment I've got four intel in intelligence, four in power. So my maximum success number on either of those would be four. And I'd be able to, if I got all of them, which I won't, but if I did, I could put four in here. Um, my I only have three wooden tokens in dexterity, so the best I can hope for in dexterity is three. But we're doing intelligence here, and the way this works is I select a number of dice. I always roll the two white dice, 
and I can choose to roll as many of the effort dice as I want. But effort dice are expended, so if you do roll one as part of uh, your dice pool, then it moves back over here to the supply, and you can no longer spend it. So, if you make all of your effort exploring the outside of the house, say I roll both of these dice, I won't have any left for whatever else I do this turn. And I'll have to wait until I get more dice next turn. Um, so, at, as it stands, I've got two. I think I'll probably use one, because I don't know if I'm going to have any more tests to do. But, it's also worth noting here that uh, the white die have the numbers 1 to 4 on them. So we've got a 1 here. Um, come on, camera. I really need you to be good today. So we've got... Um, come on, this thing is white. Anyway, we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. We've got two 2s and two 3s and uh, two 1s and a 4. That's not right. 1, 3, and 1, 4. Two ones, two twos, a three, and a four. So, fairly low numbers, really. The purple die is a bit different. It's got two ones and two twos. It's got a three, but it's also got this guy, which just means add another success. So if you roll this, you just get one to add to here. So that's in addition to any successes you get on the, the challenge track. So let me demonstrate here by rolling these dice in the bottom of my box. Focus! Here we go. Okay, so we got, we've got we rolled 8. So now we check along our little board here, and we see that the 8 is here. So all of the wooden bops to the left of it, including any in the 8 position, would be counted. So in this case, there's none here, so it's 2. You know, so I'm saying if there was 1 in the 8 spot, then it would be 3. But there isn't. And that's how the challenge testing system works. So the effort die is expended. It goes over there. These ones return to the pool for the next test. And we enter two successes into the app. You walk around the house and find no other way in. Strange amulets hung outside and symbols carved into the beams attract your attention. You don't recognize them, but looking at them feels unsettling. Gain a talisman. So now I get to go into item deck here and find item number six. But And I can add this to my situation here. So focus. There we go. Talisman. So you can add three successes in a test where you got no successes. So it's kind of like a get out of, or, or, or you know, if you failed completely, actually, you didn't fail at all. Have three successes. That's pretty good. The app, the game, the manual actually tells you sort of how many successes you should expect to need under different circumstances. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I think it says most things, most easy things are a one or a two, and then sort of things that are medium difficulty are three and four, and then for things that you would imagine to be really difficult, you need like five ups. Anyway, so that's a one use only item we can add to our assembly down here. And we come back over here. So you see now when we press OK on this in the app, uh, that option is gone. And our only remaining option is to open the door. Now I'm given two options here. I can force it open, where I'll do a red test, just like the blue intelligence test I did. This will be a strength test instead. But my strength is not nearly as good. My strength, well, actually, yeah. But I, I actually need a slightly lower result for one success, but a higher result if I'm going to get two. Although actually on the eight I just rolled, I would have had two. But that's fine, because the point is, I didn't, I don't need to, because I, you can also get through the lock using an item, if you happen to have one, and we did just buy that lock pick, so, hopefully, yeah, look at that, we made it work. You make short work of the lock, the path inside is open, the house is dark and quiet, discard the lock pick, so. The lockpick is not even returned to the decks, it's literally removed from the game until for this whole scenario. The decks are the item decks are only reset at the end of the scenario. But we've done that, so now we can progress. Alright, quiet darkness, a faint smell of herbs and dust. Neither the mayor nor his wife, the sorceress, are here. Books and ledgers lie on the table, along with some coins. 
The walls and the floor are decorated with animal hides. Ah, oh, steal the money. Yeah, I need more money. Steal it. The money is out in the open. Your mission is of great importance and you need all the help you can get. Should you take it? Yeah! You need it more than they do. The feeling of guilt is almost imperceptible. So the app does track things in the background. So you never know if doing something like this is going to come back and haunt you. I don't... I don't know if uh, if it will or not. Hopefully it won't. But uh, I guess we'll find out. In any case, I gained two money. So I'm going to grab a couple of coins from my tray over here. And just put them over here in my pool of resources. There we go. Two money. Nice. Alright, and now we're going to search the house. And so it's good I kept that other effort die, actually. Because I don't know if I would succeed without my dice. So, here we go. I'll just grab the dice from here. And we're going to throw them. See what comes. Oh, seven and a success. Hey, that's great. That's three successes. Man, that's really lucky. This I never get this lucky on stream. Haha, <laughs> great. And, uh, oh, now that, uh, that effort die is exhausted as well. So now I have no more effort die if I have to do any more tests this round. So, let's hope that this was maximum effort. At first you find nothing out of the ordinary, but then, a rug lying unevenly. A hollow sound as you knock on the floorboards beneath. The compartment hidden below is mostly empty, cleared out in a hurry, but the scraps of parchment are broken talismans of sticks and bone, and they leave no room for doubt. This is where she used to hide evidence of her sorceries. A silver key gleams in the dirt, evidently forgotten. What does it open? Gain ornamental key 32. So, we found a key left behind by the sorceress, and clearly... She was hiding some of her nefarious daring do. So, here it is. Here is the key and the ornamental key. And it says, you may exhaust one unrolled destiny die to re-roll any number, or one unrolled effort die to re-roll any number of dice in a roll. But what's great about the... So that's a passive ability we can always use. But what's great about this key is it happens to be made of silver. So one item down one more to go we're off to a good start of course i yeah all right oh we can decipher the notes we found oh i'm never going to be able to do that all right well maybe i'll roll really low and then i can use my talisman to help me all right here we go we might as well attempt it i mean i could end my turn here and tr wait till i get another effort die next round but uh I ain't got time for that, because we've only got six days after this to slay the beast. Alright, here we go. Yeah, I'm I'm not above stealing as a noble. Alright, so what I really like here is a really low number, so I can just give up my talisman for three successes. Oh, that's out of focus. It's five. Damn it, that's at least one. I got a three and a two. So that's that's one success. I think we're not going to be able to decipher any of her secret text. Rats. I don't even have anything I can give up to uh, to reroll. Paw of the wolf, flesh of the thief, blood of the sacrifices. Shape changes, minds fades, dark things are watching. Make no mistake or you'll attract their attention. Some dark sorcery is written here. The rumors seem true. Maybe it was easy for me to decipher them. So I've gained one experience point. What's an experience point, you ask? Well, it looks like this. It's a blue token with a crown on it. And I will now show you how these work. So I add that to my pool. Now, you can spend experience points at any time, except after rolling dice, before entering successes. That's it. So if, you, um, if you're if you doing a test and uh, you've got your test uh, screen up on the app, you can't roll the dice and then spend an experience point before resolving the app. So if you've started rolling dice, then that's the only time you cannot spend this. 
Otherwise, you can spend it at any time to take two movements on your skill track. And with movements, what I mean by that is you... If, if, if you want to improve your skills, obviously, you move the wooden pits to the left. Then they were easier to achieve in chests. And if uh, some things might cause you to actually lose stats, thus getting worse in various ways, and the wooden tokens will move to the right, which is what you don't want. So we can spend this for two movements, which means we can move one token twice, or we can move two tokens once. Okay? We can also move two tokens on separate tracks if we want to. The only restriction is that we can't move one token on top of another. Okay? They can't exist on in a pile. And that's it. So I'm going to hang on to that anyway for the time being, because what I'd like to do probably is wait to spend it when i see the next challenge what the next challenge i have to overcome is and maybe use it to to hedge my bets a bit before i take that test all right well we've managed to pull that off and that's the end of day two so far quite productive but the problem is now i forgot where all the other silver items in the map are so the mayor's house offers nothing more to find it is resolved and so we remove it from the board by the mayor's house. Okay. Day three. So I'm going to get one more of my effort die back over here into my pool of things that I can do useful things with. Let me press OK. Ooh, an event. Sometimes there are events at the beginning of days. Uh, Pekka, yeah, the Steam app came out um, four days ago. Uh, or three days ago, I think. So it, it's just come out. And I was just explaining to the crowd earlier that I had a very elaborate system set up to live stream from my phone. And I replaced it with the app at the last minute. And now I'm having all these technical issues. But I think we've got them all sorted. The game seems to be running okay. So there you go. The Steam app is now available. It's got all of the core set in it, just like the iOS app and the Android app. But there's no... Um... Oh yeah, and no, it's got the expansion as well. Sea of Sand. But for those of us who um, out there, so I, oh God, I didn't even mention this. I'm terrible. So I've got the uh, the retail version of this game, which Lucky Duck Games kindly sent me a review copy of. Oh my God, I'm going to have to like edit this into the beginning of the stream somehow. Um, Lucky Duck Games sent me this to play. Um, so there is, of course, a Kickstarter edition that's out there as well with fancy uh, mats and coins and uh, Kickstarter exclusive content. Um, I may or may not, uh, have access to that, but, uh, I'm playing the review copy, the core set, today. I just have, um, friends who got the Kickstarter, that's all. But, uh, yeah, Az was very lovely, and he sent me a review copy of this, so that I can tell you all whether or not you should buy it, or just hang out and play it with me. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Okay. Drawn by rumors of the monster, the bishop himself arrives in town. He takes up residence in the church, and it's said that he offers a reward to anyone who slaves wol slays the wolves threatening the faithful. He believes them to be in league with the beast, so we could go and slay the wolves and get the reward from the bishop. The priest was seen traveling east toward the crossroads, burdened by some troubling dilemma. So the priest leaves... And the bishop arrives. So we've got our little uh, bishop mini here. There he is. No, not zoom. Focus. So what we're going to go and do. This is where the hand camera would be useful. But uh, unfortunately it's not um, functioning. If Yeah. We all know the story. We've been there. So anyway, the priest is going to head off to the east somewhere. He's off the board. And now the bishop is here at the uh, church. And it's back to me. So you get these events that sort of change the world as well as the game goes on. Certain things will become available and other things will become unavailable. Now I need to remember where I can get another silver item. Day three of eight. God, the challenger mode is absolutely ruthless. Hmm. 
God, I can't remember for the life of me. Where to go next? So, oh, no, don't explore any tiles. So this is all of the tiles around here. God, something, there might be something else useful as well that we can do. Um, but, oh my god, the, the, this number of turns is absolutely ruthless number of turns. I think I actually remember something about... <laughs> we are hunting hexy beasts, Jonathan. Exactly. We're hunting a werewolf here. Um, so we need some silver. So, I need to remember where I can get the other silver items. And I've totally forgotten. Um, oh my god oh my god you guys this is terrible I feel like on challenger mode one wrong step and you're done for it's uh so I really don't want to blow this but there's a lot more to explore um I think uh well I actually think this map is a total of uh 12 tiles but there's a lot of little adventures and stuff going on you'll discover as you reveal these tiles so i think the the exploration the sandboxy part of it is actually really enjoyable um i'm gonna to save my thoughts for some kind of formal review at some point of the game but uh i'd like to get through the main mission first before i really go into more depth suffice to say that uh, michael and i our first impressions after playing the prototype were very good and um, the fact that Leanne's come back to play the game three times it shows that uh, it's certainly got some some staying power, some intrigue to it. Ah, you know, I think I can remember how to get one bit of silver, but I feel like it's going to take too long to do. So I don't really want to do it. I'm thinking... I need to go to the right anyway. This is a good time, actually, probably, to check our destiny again. So, and the reason why is... Oh, no, actually. Do you know what? So, it says, I was going to say, when you're ready, go to the church in the western part of town to fulfill your destiny. So, actually, I don't even need to go very far. I just need to go over to where the church is. So, that's not really far at all. So never mind that. Um, there's other advantages, actually, for visiting the church. But what I'm thinking is I've got so much traveling to do. Um, but I can only reveal five more tiles in total. Before I run out of time. Oh my god. Okay. God, where is that other piece of silver? I know that's no good. I know that's no good. I can't remember what that does. I don't think that's any use. I think we should go this way. I think we should go east. We're going to try going east. Ugh. The hanging tree stands where two roads meet. Explore the tile. Uh, yeah. All right. Here we go, folks. <laughs> We're doing our best here. Is this me? Yes, there I am, the little noble, heading over this way. Okay. The crossroads where the hanging tree grows, an ominous place. Okay. There's music in the distance. The Romani have made camp to the south. Okay, so. There we go. The Romani camp down there. All right, so we've got a hanging tree here. Ropes hang from the gnarled branches. The hanging tree stands as a warning to those who would break the law. 
There's our priest from before, who we saw traveling east. Here he is. He's like, you, noble, I recognize you. And that's it. Damn it. Okay, I thought there was more going on here. Also, there's supposed to be a space to the north uh, above me that's not here. So this is... The challenger mode is clearly slightly different to the regular mode. But that's fine, because it's good. I, like I said, I just want to show off the game and explain the rules here. I don't really want to uh, spoil... I want to keep the spoilers to an absolute minimum. So I can't remember what the Hanging Tree resolves, but I actually was looking for a different event here. I'm not sure if I've run out of time. Or I've come to... I don't know. Like I said, sometimes uh, events trigger at different times as well, so it's possible I'm just misremembering the order in which these things come out, but let's, uh, do we talk to the priest? I feel like that's kind of useless. Or do we go to the hanging tree? I don't think the hanging tree is all that useful either. Um, let's try the hanging tree, just because I can't quite remember, oh god. I don't want to make the wrong choice. We're visiting the hanging tree. A red-headed girl in Romani clothes stands beneath the dead tree, looking at something high up. See that? She points at a gnarled branch high up, right next to the old hangman's noose. She doesn't even turn towards you. You realize she's showing you a bird's nest. I had a crow, she explains, and she found all sorts of treasures for me. She stashed some really valuable things up there and then left. Finally, the girl looks at you. Maybe you could help me. Okay, so you can give her back her crow. But I'm going to have to show her an item to do that. I don't have her crow, so I can't. I can climb the tree, but I'll need an item for that, which I don't have. I can ask the girl about my destiny, ask her about an item, or take a closer look at the tree. So I don't think any of these are going to be particularly useful for me right now. Um... We can ask her about my destiny, just to show you guys how that works now that the camera's working. Um, little girl, do you know about this? Oh, I could help you with this, she says, pointing up the tree. If only you could help me get my things from up there. Okay, so I guess I'm on the right track then. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have anything to climb the tree with. Let's, uh... Let's try a test here and see what happens when I do something stupid. Actually, first let's take a closer look at the tree anyway. We might as well try that. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to roll our blues. And so, what I can do here, because I haven't rolled any dice yet, I can spend my token. And I'm going to improve this blue stat. And am I going to improve another blue stat? Sure, why not? There we go. So, there's my two movements. I return the experience point to the pool. I'm just going to throw the white dice. I want to save my effort dice for later. Although sometimes failing can cause you to discard effort dice. So this isn't always smart, but uh, I'm running the risk anyway. So here we go. All right, so I've rolled four and I've got one success. Oh, I could use my talisman if I had... Okay, well, it's anyway, it's fine. I'm sure this is an easy test, probably. Let's find out. <clears throat> Uh-oh, it was a failure. You search around the hanging tree. Both the eerie atmosphere and the girl's constant talking make it hard to concentrate. You find nothing. Lose one blue movement, exhaust a purple die, and gain an experience point. I don't think that was worth it. So that, that was a big blunder on my part. So I exhaust this. I gain one of these, but now I have to lose a blue movement. So you might as well put that one back up there. Um, but I did gain an experience point, so it's not a total failure. In the uh, prototype, you never got experience points for failing, and that was miserable. It just, things became impossible. So, this is a big improvement. Alright, I can't really do any of the rest of this. Um, let's try to climb the tree with my sword. So, I'm going to show the camera my sword, and the camera's going to tell me, No, you idiot. You can't, uh, you can't climb the tree with a sword, okay? Okay. 
Without a rope, you stand no chance to climb the icy trunk. The nest and silver glint inside are way too high up. Okie dokie. Uh, let's uh, ask the girl about an item. Let's ask her about the ornamental key. Maybe she knows something about th about it. She probably doesn't. The smith can do wonders with silver. It's said a silver blade can kill the unholy beast. I know that, little girl. I figured that out. I didn't need you to tell me. God, I'm smart. Okay. Uh, end turn. So, we get to refresh an effort die, and then we're just pressing on. So, there's our effort die there. And we've got five days left. Ooh. The missing mayor is the main topic of town gossip. Some blame his disappearance on his wife, who is widely distrusted. She's a strange woman who is rumored to dabble in the arcane arts. The sorceress, some call her behind her back. When she, he disappeared, so did she. Sorry about that, guys. I didn't, forgot to zoom in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head south to the Romani camp, because I think I can buy rope there. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I really hope I can buy rope in the Romani camp. We'll have to remember. There's definitely a shop there, so uh, fingers crossed. There's music in the distance. The Romani have made their camp there. Yes! Oh my god! It's the Romani camp. And we're heading south. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. Um, the Romani camp is warm and welcoming. Are they not afraid of the beast? So there's the... Uh, the fortune teller. She's, uh, I can, that's still frozen, so I guess you just have to put up with my face over the fortune teller. Uh, okie dokie. Where is she? Here she is. So we can put our, uh, our little figure out here onto the, um, the board. So, the fortune teller is here. And we've also got a wagon that belongs to the Romani king, surrounded by celebration. So, that's a little exploration token down there as well. Okay, so I want to go and visit the Romani camp. The fortune teller represents the Romani camp, and I believe there's a shop there. So, let's go ahead and do that. Yes! So, no! She's got a lantern, a horse, medicine, and a torch, but no rope. Ah, oh, that's no good. None of this is any good. 34, 1, 12, 12, 15. Oh, I might be in trouble. I made a... Well, the horse is actually useful, so we might buy a horse. Although I kind of need this money for a rope. Who sells ropes, then? Who else has a shop? Um... Mystical Romani noises. Oh, good night, Margo. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. So we got our horse. So I'll probably buy the horse because uh, that's actually super useful. We've also got here... Um, There we go. Instead of a regular move, move to any explored tile. Super useful. And the medicine, um, you can improve your red strength line for each other thing. Uh, for each other item that you have. So that's actually pretty useful too. Especially right now because I have a whole bunch of items. Okay, so we got our horse there, we got our medicines, a torch and a lantern. Lantern's 34, and the torch is 50. Okay, so there's our torch there, plus one. Discard the torch to gain plus one to each test this turn. It's also fire and gear, which could prove useful. Uh, and what was the last one? 
a lantern, 34, which I think is also actually pretty useful, if I remember what it does. Each time you explore, you gain a experience point. Yeah, that's super useful. Alright, so there's her shop. Don't knock that over. We need that. <laughs> Alright, so we can put that token up there to show that this is the shop of the Romani camp. Okay. Well, I don't think any of that's going to be super useful. I mean, it's all useful, but I don't think it's anything is exactly what we need. Okay. So, let's ask her about our destiny first. I think that's the most useful thing. We can get a bit more information. She might give me a, a hint. So, we ask her about our destiny. We want to know about uh, this destiny here. The abbey used to hold many treasures, but now it lies in ruins. Maybe something remains. Oh, I thought about the abbey. I did. I did think about the abbey, and then I was like, I don't think the abbey's going to be useful because... I don't think the Abbey's going to be useful because I forgot what item was there. I thought it was a different kind of item, and it might be both. Anyway, maybe we can figure that out. Okay. Sell a ritual item to the Romani. Let the fortune teller divine your fate for a coin. Speak in defense of the priest. Take a look around the Romani market and ask the fortune teller about an item. Okay, so here's an interesting thing as well because um, that I'm noticing here. Because actually, in the in the competitive mode of the game, there are many things that you can do that may or may not be useful for you to do. Because there's four destinies in play, and two of them are secret. You don't know what they are. So the game is, there's, there's things you can actually do in the game. Because everyone could do all the quests, regardless of which destiny they're kind of pertinent to. Which means that you can actually wind up fulfilling quests that are not all that useful to you achieving your destiny, but actually kind of prevent your opponent from doing the quest. Furthermore, um, they will wind up giving you a useful item, although it might be much more useful to your opponent's destiny. It might not help you achieve your destiny, it might just kind of help you win, uh, do better in the game itself. But in the challenger mode, it seems like a lot of this is missing because there's only my destinies in play. So a lot of, like, for example, sell a ritual item to the Romani is different. This is something else in the competitive version. And that's because my destinies don't have anything to do with this. But in the competitive version, you would probably have a destiny that does have something to do with that in play. So that's really interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do... I might as well speak in defense of the priest, I think. I can't remember for the life of me what that does, but I feel like passing the test might actually help. So, god damn it, now I, have to, now I have to go to the abbey. That's so far away. Okay, let's try this and see what happens. So, what I'll do is I think I'm going to probably spend my experience token and improve this one. The odds of me getting six is quite low. Do we improve that again? Or do we try to improve our power? Let's just improve our power, because I think that suffered. So there we go. Experience point done. I'll roll all three dice. Will I? Nah. This isn't all that important to me. So fingers crossed I won't fail horribly. Uh, double one. It's a two. Well, I guess this is a good opportunity to use the talisman and get three successes. Why not? We might get something useful out of it. Besides, it seems like I haven't had all that many opportunities to use the talisman anyway. So we'll discard that and gain three successes, which is a bit overkill, but maybe we'll be given something nice. Who knows? The fortune teller laughs. I had hoped he would come gather enough courage to come here himself instead of sending messengers, but it is what it is. If you can convince him, he can ask his questions safely. I will welcome him. So we've kind of jumped into the middle of a quest here. But, okay, so at least if I talk to the priest, maybe I'll get something out of it. But I don't really need to do that. Um, I'm not going to get her to divide my fate, because I think I might need... Well, I don't need a rope if we're going to the abbey. I don't need a rope. So maybe she'll give me something useful if I ask for this. We might as well. Yes, I will spend one money. 
Reveal to me my... Wait, how much is the horse? I need the horse. Okay, that's just one money too. Although, actually, I could just buy some useful items. Um, I need the, the horse. I could also get a medicine. That would be useful. Yeah, let's get medicine and vastly improve our red track. So, no, actually. Let's instead just buy medicine and a horse. Okay, so... There we go, that's gone from her shop. And the medicine says, For each other item you own, improve your red track one space. So we'll literally ditch this right now. And that's three other items, so we can make three movements on the red track. So let's just go ahead and improve all of this. Actually, yeah, I want to start bringing that one down so I can start getting better ones as well. Alright, and then we're done. We have uh, spent all of our money. And there's nothing left for us to do here without any money. So we end our turn. Yes! The townsfolk are no cowards. If you don't make a move against the beast fast, you fear they will find a way without you if you want to be a hero. Act fast. Yep, yeah, I will. I have four days remaining. So I've got one more effort die. And I don't think I'm going to have enough time to do this, but I might just... We will find out. Okay, what's more useful for me to do? Actually, I think... Oh god, I think I'm going to run out of time. The beast attacks! The grounds around the noble manor to the northeast become a scene of slaughter. Men and animals alike lie dead. The manor's gates are shut. The town hall is hastily transformed into a field hospital. The victims are lucky a doctor was passing through town. Okay, so we put a, put a doctor out at the field hospital. More events! More stuff is happening. So here he is, our little plague doctor figure here. And he's going out onto the board. Up here. There he is. Okay. All right, and there's the manor. This is the card I was expecting to see earlier. I guess it doesn't appear until this event actually takes place, which is mildly annoying, but... This is the thing about challenger mode. You kind of have to just know the scenario really, really well. Even though I've played it twice, I'm a little uh, lazy on it because I've been playing a lot of games. So there we go. Card 34. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a item up there. All right, so we've got two options. We can either head to the Abbey, which is really far away, and I don't think we're going to be able to do it in four days. Um, I think by the time we get to the Abbey, it'll be like day six, and then we won't have time to return to the Smith. I think we can get either a rope or a... I think we can get a rope at the... At the manor. I think there's also silver up there. I think we can get both silver and a rope at the manor. So that might be more worthwhile because we can get there this turn. So I think I'm going to take that gamble. Because even if I use my horse to get to the abbey. Um, it's going to take me two turns of exploration. Essentially the Romani camp is a big freaking waste of time. And I've wasted two days I think. And now I'm in trouble. <laughs> All right, so here's the plan. We're going to go uh, north, north up to here. And let's move this over here, I guess. And uh, now we're up, up, uh, up here. And we're going to investigate the, the tile here. Yeah, I think we can get a rope here. And if we can't get a rope here, I'm sure there's silver. This is kind of where I wanted to come in the first place, but it's fine. Okay. A noble abode. The grounds include a stable, gardens, and servants' hovels. The smell of blood is in the air. So there's the manor. Up here. Ah, there was a bit of text there. I totally forgot to read. But uh, the manor is surrounded by blood... 
from the beast's attack. There's also the stable. Stable by the manor suffered greatly in the beast's attack as well. Okay. Oh, the beast is also here. Shit. <laughs> uh, leave me alone, beast. Don't come and hurt me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever come to the manor this early in the game. So here's our beast. Arr, werewolf attack. Arr, 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 arr. No. The beast is lurking nearby. Beware. The ground looks like a battlefield. The beast's recent attack wreaked havoc on the stable and the servants' quarters, leaving the place ruined and stained with blood. Refresh one of your dice. Okay, so I will do that. Now got all three of my effort dice. I can't get any more, so I might as well spend some. So I'm pretty sure if we go to the manor, we'll have an opportunity to look for a silver item. I also think there's a rope at the stable, but the stable is two steps. So I'm gambling on making up time here. I'm going to go to the manor and see if I can find the silver item. Fingers crossed. Uh, Alessandra says, horse is super powerful in challenge mode. Yeah, that's why I got it. Also because I wandered off in the wrong direction. I never needed to go to the Romani camp. Oops. The horse is actually great in competitive mode as well. The horse is just a great card. Just move to any um, or explore tile. It's absolutely great. And also look, it's beautiful and fantastic. I can actually turn the horse in at the stable as well uh, because he's lost all his horses. And if you bring him horses, uh, he will give you a reward. But I, I think if I go to the manor... There were guards making a delivery and they've lost it. So let's go to the manor. Um, and I think the delivery has silver in it. Fingers crossed. As you approach the manor, it quickly becomes clear that you won't be getting in anytime soon. The walls are tall and the gate is securely locked. Despite the deep claw marks it now bears, snow the snow is covered in blood. And you hear the distant neighing of a panicked horse that must have escaped from the stable. A wounded mercenary sits by the gate, shocked and wide-eyed. He doesn't respond to your greeting. Okay, I need to calm him down. Um, if I had alcohol, I think I could probably give him alcohol or maybe medicine, but I don't. So I'm just going to have to speak. Oh yeah, tend to his wounds. Damn it! I should have kept the medicine. Instead, I just used it on myself like a dumbass. All right, so we're going to speak kind words. I'm going to use um, one effort die here. No, I really need this to go well. I'm using two effort die here. No, I'm going to use one because I know that I have another chest that I'm also going to need to succeed at. If I want to do well here. So fingers crossed. Uh, is that a good roll? I've rolled six. That's two successes. Hopefully that's enough. Oh god, please be enough. In time, your kind words bring him back to his senses. In return, he tells you his story. He and his companions were transporting some valuable loot their noble master sent back here from the war with the intention of donating it to the church. They were assailed by the monster just before reaching the gates. You should be able to track my friend, he says. He ran with the treasure as soon as he saw the creature and it gave chase. He's likely dead now. He stands up and prepares to leave. As for me, I'm off to seek safer employment. Great. Because I need that treasure. So I'm going to um, go ahead and refresh the die I just used. And I've got two white dice here. And I'm going to follow the tracks. So we're going to do a green check now. My green is not very good. And I need this to be successful, so let's throw four dice, two effort dice. I'm saving one, which may or may not prove foolish. We'll find out now. Here we go. Oh yeah, I can show you my player board here if you guys want to see what my success criteria is. It's not great. I'm going to need a good roll here. Alright, so I've got ten, which is actually two successes. I was kind of hoping for more, but hopefully that's enough. Let's find out. Yes. It's a grisly sight you see after following the other mercenaries' tracks to the nearby thicket. The beast got him and didn't leave much. A small chest lies smashed in the bloody snow. Silver and gold gleam inside. Gain hand mirror and two gold. Alrighty. So, we put our white dice back here. Our two exhausted effort dice go into the supply. We're going to gain two money, which we really don't need. And we're going to go over here to this deck and we're going to gain the hand mirror which we note if the camera will focus kindly for us is made of silver brilliant okay 
And that's uh, the end of my turn because I don't think I can do anything else here. Uh, I can try to catch this horse. I mean, I suppose I might as well, although I, well, quite frankly, I don't think I need to. No, I don't, I'm not going to bother in case I fail and lose. Well, actually, you know, even when you fail, you sometimes get experience. But what if I lose my effort die? No, I need my effort dice. I'm not going to attempt to do this in case I fail. And it's horrible. And it's all bad. And I don't want it to be bad. I want it to be good. I want things to be good. So, let's end our turn. No one will get inside the manor until the matter with the beast is resolved. Very well. The matter, the, the manor is actually done. Which is interesting because, um... You could have still caught that horse. But now you can't. Okay. Day six. Uh. So I get one more effort die. I think I'm going to run out of time. The beast was seen running towards the woods. It moved inhumanly fast. Oh, bye-bye, Mr. Beast. That werewolf has 50 million subscribers on YouTube. All right, so I'm going to move two spaces back to the smith. A one, two. That's my movement there. And then we're going to visit the smith. Hello. And I'm going to give him a silver item. Yeah, I'm going to be one turn short of doing this, guys. It's going to be so frustrating. Focus! Please? There we go. Pure silver, the smith says, quickly evaluating your finding. If you want a silver blade, I'll need some more material, of course, but this is more than enough to get me started. The smith starts working on the weapon. He will need one more silver item to melt down. Is the beast afraid? You feel like you've delayed its attack. You gain three extra days. What? Oh, well, then I think we've got this, guys. We only needed, like, one more. Aha! <laughs> Um, well, actually, then also, though, we probably have to go and fulfill our destiny, which will take ages, especially if I don't have any good items to do that with. So, perhaps I've been too, uh, too efficient. Um, we can take a look at it. We could buy some stuff from him. Actually, that's probably prudent, especially if we're going to go and fight the, uh, the beast. Okay. Let's, uh, in, 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 in... In good, let's go ahead and buy some items here. I'm going to spend both my gold by the trap, which is the, uh, if you remember, it's the card that lets me treat my, in a green test, instead of rolling dice, you can uh, treat your result as 10. And I'm also going to buy the hatchet. Well, I've still got a sword, actually, so maybe I don't need the hatchet. Oh, actually, no, let's buy the lockpick, and we can use it to improve our dexterity. That's a good idea, yes. Um, and then I'll just immediately use the lockpick, which says discard this to improve your green track for each other item you own. So that's four movements on the green track, which is actually kind of awesome. So let's go one, two... Uh, no, let's go one, two, three, four, like that. All right, nice. And we're done. We can also steal things, but I've never tried that. And uh, also, if I steal something and he catches me, I might get caught and then he might not talk to me anymore. I don't know. Like, obviously, it's an app, so it can just be like, the smith says, never come back, and then just won't talk to you. And you have to do the other destiny. I don't know. It's not worth the risk. So day seven, we get one more effort die. And... Husband of a witch, son of a witch. Nothing good could come from this, some say about the mare, the missing mare. Others claim the sorceress summoned the beast to kill him as she hid in the dark woods. Ooh, well, there's probably like all kinds of foresty bits going on down here. But uh, I don't know. We're not going down there. We don't need to. Uh, we're going to go back to the smith. We're just staying here. We're staying put. And we're visiting the smith again and handing over our other silver item. So this is our ornamental key that we found. Ooh. 
Right. This is day seven. We've now got 11 days. No, I still think we should probably just get on with things. Pure silver! So the, the thing is, I know where the key goes, and I know something useful you can do with the key, but I don't think it, I don't think we have time. We're on a very tight, tight schedule here in challenge mode. And also, I don't want to spoil anything. So if you want to know what the key does, you're going to have to get the game to play it yourself. Pure silver, the smith says, quickly evaluating your finding. This will be enough, says the smith. Tomorrow you're blade. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? But I'm... I need to... I don't, I don't have time. Okay, discard the ornamental key. The smith has received enough material. Meet his assistant in the church to begin your hunt. Is the beast afraid? You feel like you might have delayed its attack. You gain three extra days. Okay. And that's the end of my... Actually, that's the end of my day today. So, that's the end of the turn. We're on to day eight. We've actually got maxed out effort die. So, we kind of got two options here. Oh! The beast slinks into the shadows, leaving behind only the bloody remains of its latest victim. Where was it? We'll never know. Where did it go? We don't know. We've only explored less than half the board. So, I have rather efficiently uh, accomplished my goal here. I thought we only had, I thought we had literally eight days and I'd messed it up. But now we've got um, 14 days and we're on day eight. So we can actually head over to the church now and begin our destiny. So a destiny is essentially fulfilling the quest you've been given at the beginning of the game. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is trying to slay the beast with the silver weapon we've just forged at the blacksmiths, as per the destiny on the back of our card here. The uh, Slay the beast. Find and bring two silver items to the blacksmith so you can make a weapon. Okay, but the thing is, that's not all. Once we begin the destiny, we'll, we'll head on an irrevocable path that we must resolve. And that path is resolvable, but the less prepared you are for it, the longer it's going to take you to get to the end of the path. And the number of steps on the path will take you a number of days. So, I don't know if I'm prepared enough to actually fight the beast. And in the competitive mode, really what I'm thinking of is, am I far enough ahead of my opponent or am I... If I was behind my opponent, I'd want to go and get on with my destiny as quickly as possible to try and ex catch up. But also, if um, if I'm like far ahead of my opponent in terms of realizing my destiny, then you know I might not. I might want to wait before I go on my destiny to collect items or level up a bit more. I get some more of those experience tokens and move my track up a bit because once the destiny starts, it's going to be like here's a test, here's a test, here's a test, and. You're going to need to pass those tests. And if you fail, you're going to be delayed. And each delay is going to be like a day. So, you know, every day your opponent gets another turn to try and catch up with you. Or, in this case, we're going to lose one of our, our days in the challenge mode. So, I think, uh, I think we'll probably just go and get on with it. Because... Yeah, Cohen, I know that the, the beast does leave behind bloody remains as well. Yeah. Um, if I go looking for them. But... The thing is, there's a whole bunch of other stories on the map here and things like that. But for those of you who haven't played the game, who are watching this, um, I don't want to spoil it. I want to give you a flavor, a taste of the game, and see if I can do this challenge mode. But that's it. So, there's, as you can see, we've actually visited... We've done less than half. We have not even flipped over half the tiles. And of the tiles we have flipped, we did like less than half of what was on them. So... You know, if you're playing the explore solo mode, you could leisurely go around doing all of these things. I don't know if that would feel a bit too easy, but in any case, I'm just going to go over here, get on with my destiny. And if I fail, it's OK, because, you know, um, I won't spoil the ending. And if I succeed, hooray, because we've won together. So here we go to the church to hunt the beast. The church delivers the faithful every day. <clears throat> The church gathers the faithful every day since the beast attacked. Some see the beast as a divine punishment. Most believe it can't step onto sacred ground. With so many eager to repent for their sins, the offering box is always full. The bishop has taken over and made the church his own. So far, no one has earned his reward. So we get to see a new symbol now, which is this one down here. This is the destiny symbol. Once I start that, I'm done. I cannot proceed 
I think if I pray, I actually get to refresh effort dice, but all three of my effort dice are refreshed, so I can't get any more, so let's let the hunt begin. So, yeah, this warns you there's no turning back. If you proceed with this, then this begins the end of your game, and you won't be able to do any more exploring or buying or interacting with the board. You're just going to be reading text and doing ta challenges with whatever you've got left over. It is time! The smith's assistant left a gift for you. As you unwrap it from its cloth cover, its silver tip shines bright in the candlelight. Truly, a monster slayer's weapon. Gain the silver spear, item 41. So it says here, a silver spear. In every pa strength test, you may decrease dexterity to use all of your dexterity instead of power. Okay, so... I'm actually not entirely sure how to parse that. In every strength test, you may decrease dexterity to use all of your dexterity instead of power. But I think I'm better at power. Well, we'll find out. You find it fitting that your hunt should begin in the church, as all righteous quests should. You look at the spear once more, its tip gleaming with cold light. Saints watch you from the stained glass windows. Time to track down the beast, or you can't leave without a blessing. Hmm. Hmm. Shall we have a blessing? Nah, let's just get to it. It's a green test. I'm going to roll with one... One effort die here. I've rolled nine. That's a three. It's hard to see, but it's a three. So we've rolled nine, which means three successes. Hey, I think that's going to be enough. There is no time to lose. You leave the relative safety of the church behind and march through the town. Inspiring all with the silver weapon you carry, some folk cheer and wish you luck, and you already feel like a hero of legend. You barely reach the edge of town before finding the beast's tracks in the snow. The bloody footprints are impossibly large. The blood is still fresh. Will yours be spilled as well? And that's the end of your turn. So you see, like, you will be delayed on this track. In challenge mode, it means I, I, well, I've got six days remaining, so hopefully I'll be okay. But also, if this was the competitive mode, every, it still gives my opponent a chance to catch up. So we get one die back here. And we proceed. You stare into the forest from its edge. You are certain the beast is nearby. Too close, in fact, for you to make out any further preparations. Oh my god. Oh no. Okay, so I can lure it with blood. What are my options here? So you can check your options. Actually, this is a useful thing that I didn't show yet. So if I click here, I get to see lure it with blood, and then I can say spill your own or sacrifice an animal. And I can actually go up here and close that if I change my mind. But I do happen to have a horse, and as loath as I am to kill my horse, because that seems horrible. I also don't think calling the beast out is going to work. I don't think two successes will be enough to call the beast. And I, I'm not going to get 11 and 12 without spending all of my effort dice. And let me tell you, management, effective management of the effort dice is hugely critical to success in this game. Uh... Okay, I'm going to kill the horse. I hate it, though, guys. I really don't like killing animals. But I want to progress the game. Oh, God. Oh. I'm not going to give you a name, horse. It's going to make me too sad. Oh. The horse doesn't want to go. Oh, I'm so sad. I don't want to think about it. I really don't want to think about it. Just take the card! <laughs> Just take the card, damn it. Put me out of my misery. Come on. 
Seriously, though, I'm doing this to speed up the stream, and you're making me look like an idiot. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, come on. If I put it back here, can you see it? Right, come on. Focus on this. Focus on my finger. Can you see this? Please? Alright, I guess we're going to try this one more time. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to point the camera at something else. Alright, look, there's nothing else for you to look at but this card. It's the rare and crazy upside down horse. Yes! No! <laughs> your animal companion lies dead, sacrificed on your path to glory. Fresh blood paints the snow, its sharp smell in the winter air. You wait, knowing that the beast will certainly react to the irresistible scent. And there it is, a glimpse of movement behind the trees, a howl, disturbingly taunting. Uh, your horse goes to the farm. Uh, now is your moment of glory. Attack! Oh, wait. The beast slowly emerges from between the huts. It's so close you can feel the warmth of its breath, breath wash, washing over you. A mountain of muscle and sinew covered in matted fur. You grasp your weapon tighter. This is your moment of glory. Attack! Yes, we get to play the focus the camera minigame again. Oh my god, do you hear the beast sound effects? That's actually really cool. You've prepared well. The silver sp shines brightly. Strike! Enter a number of successes. Okay, so... What we're going to need here is... So in every power test, you may decrease dexterity by one step to use all of your dexterity instead of power so my interpretation of this and i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm parsing this correctly is that instead of i can just decrease this for a result of three but do you know what? it's kind of okay because what i think i'll do is i'll actually just discard my sword well actually do you know i think i might just roll all of my dice let's just throw all the dice i feel like i'm gonna get a really good result with all these dice I've got, I saved them all up. I've got five dice. Let's go. All right. Wow, double four. That's amazing. So we've rolled 11 and a success. That's like the best possible result. I never get this lucky on stream. I never get this lucky. Or in the game, for that matter, actually. That's amazing. That's legitimately actually amazing. Wow. Okay, so 11, uh, so that's, uh, that's three, I mean 12 actually would have also been five, but that's four successes, which I think is awesome. Hopefully I won't have to do another test, but if I do, and it's power, I mean I've got my trap and my sword, so provided I don't have to do any blue tests, I'll be okay. You strike true, and the silver blade pierces the monster's chest. Blood flows as it falls to its knees with a cry of pain. Behind you, cheers begin to sound. 
The beast lies before you, breathing heavily. Its eyes are full of human pain. All around you, the bravest of the townsfolk gather to witness your victory. End this with joy. End this with pity. Oh, I can set an example. Chat, what do you think? What do you think? End it with joy or end it with pity? I'm going to have to do another mic check, but we can get another three successes using the sword, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm inclined to do pity as well, Heggers. I think uh, I think the noble is probably, his knee-jerk reaction would probably be to end it with joy, because it's like, yes, I'm the brave prick who killed the beast. But um, I think that uh, we might set a good example by showing that there's no... Also, I'm sad because my horse died. So, let's end it with pity. Alright, here we go. So, I'm going to discard my sword to treat my die result as 10, which gets me three successes. So, the sword is gone. One, two, three. There is no joy as you end the beast's suffering. You feel like you've taken part in something beyond your understanding. Whatever curse befell this creature, it was not an evil you expected to face. The crowd shares your silence, watching the bloody scene almost with sadness. You are their hero, you know that. But so much blood has been spilled. The time for celebrations will come after mourning. You win! Get my face out of here. Show, show, show people the text. Where's the... There, unlock this. Move me... Oh no, that's the wrong thing. Lock that. Let me move to come on. There we go. People rejoiced as their hero, bloodied but triumphant, stood over the fallen beast. Finally, he gained the admiration he craved. As the bravest of the villagers marveled at the monster's carcass, gasps of disbelief resounded. The beast's form, no longer held by the curse that shaped it, shifted and transformed, revealing the maimed but recognizable face of the mayor himself. No one knew what curse befell him, but they were sure of two things. His wife, the sorceress, was to blame, and surely the noble was a hero, worthy of presiding over the land. She was soon found hiding in the dark woods and exiled in shame. He reigned for long years, a just and brave man, beloved by his subjects. Soon the winter ended, and with it, the memory of this bloody time. As spring came, celebrations were held. As survivors of the winter days feasted, merry and eager to leave the darkness behind, little did they know that their predicament was just the beginning of something much grander. Bum bum, bum bum bum. Did you enjoy playing Destiny's? No! I hated it! <laughs> Please consider that now. All right, so we've done one of um, one of our available five chapters now. There you go, five more to go. Plus, there's uh, an expansion which I think has another three chapters in it. Let's go and have a look, actually. Okay, yes, three chapters in the expansion. Plus, there's a Kickstarter exclusive box that uh, I don't think you can get, so don't worry about it. But this uh, Sea of Sand, I think, is like sort of Eastern deserty stuff. Which The year is 1390, and the Barbary Crusade is about to start. Join it and sail across the Mediterranean Sea together with the Crusader forces. The unknown Saracen's coast awaits you, and who knows how much further the adventure will take you. All right, that sounds interesting. Um, neat. I did not actually expect to succeed that, but uh, also, I guess... Um, <laughs> we're all mourning the death of Edgar Allan Poney. Yes. Thanks, Haggers. Pity for the horse, I know. So that was uh that was the solo challenger mode of Destinies. Uh relatively executable if you know the scenario, uh, it seems. Um, but uh that's given you some real good insight, I think, into how the game functions and the mechanisms with spoiling the absolute bare minimum, I think. Um if you're playing the competitive mode. When you get to that end screen, in addition to having the win text about what happens, there's also a little uh, text about what happened to everybody else saying, you know, like um, they've, you know, they were unable to achieve their destinies and they've, you know, they're sad about it. Um, so that's really interesting, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm 
I've been having a good time playing the game with my partner, and I actually quite enjoyed going through this scenario here. Although, uh, you know, having played this one, I, I don't know what this experience would be like as a... I mean, this felt like a really good way to demo it, but I'm not sure if this was particularly engaging as a sort of... A, as a as a sort of solo endeavor just because i it's hard to judge whether or not coming at this i think coming at this blind would have been like impossible right like it would have been really really difficult to do um and you would have to repeat it several times and through trial and error discover how to do it like you would have no idea i mean to be fair actually it does feel like the destiny tips were quite useful and i actually felt like um the destiny tips that I got from the little girl and the Romani were both a bit more useful than they would be in the competitive mode. I find the tips are a bit more cryptic in the competitive mode, but asking about your destiny is a super useful way to get information about how where to proceed next. So you're not sort of flying totally blind. Um, I mean, I, the Romani tip, she's like, go to the Abbey, which of course in the challenge mode would probably be really really difficult to work out if you don't know where the abbey is um getting to the abbey would probably end trying trying to get to the abbey would end the game for you there and three days grace that you get for handing in a silver item is not a lot like it's still super tight um but you know you can always play the explore mode if the time limit of the challenge mode feels too uh, unenjoyable or too restrictive of course, I don't know whether it would feel challenging enough in the explore mode, but maybe you just like the idea of exploring the sandbox world and going through all these little adventures and stuff, and that's enough for you. Um, you know, I, I think that could be quite fun, really. Um, certainly, I've played three games with Leanne, and my primary concern was that uh, whoever lo loses each scenario sort of get frustrated or disengage with the story or feel like they weren't really involved but um you know i don't without uh i mean Le so leanne hasn't actually managed to win one yet and she's still really enjoying the game if anything she's come away more enthusiastic about it uh than i have although maybe that's just because i'm doing my game reviewer analytical thinking thing um but uh yeah so i mean i i have some so i have been enjoying playing the game um certainly with her so and i mean the thing is as well this core set is two to four hours five scenarios so it's about 20 10 to 20 hours of gameplay but it's uh it's i think it's like 39 40 quid something like that um so it's not super dear and it's not legacy so you can and you know you can sell, play it through sell it on it doesn't really have a lot of replayability so you might even be able to pick it up super cheap on the secondary market so you can't i mean it's it's not too dear either if it's something you'd like to try out for yourself and see how it works but uh, as you can see super simple to execute i think the most futzy thing really um or the most sort of challenging thing i think is um for especially for people who aren't sort of super familiar with games and stuff like that are the um the the way this whole whole sort of challenge works if you can get your head around how the stat lines work um then you know you pretty much got the challenge system down and the other thing is these these effort dice you know because you've got to have a supply of three that's your maximum you get one per turn plus sometimes you might get one other times and then when you roll them they're spent and you have to recover them that could be a bit futzy for people who aren't used to board games but it is very light and i think the app and the storytelling makes it very engaging for people so i do think it's reasonably accessible as well and you saw me doing all kinds of uh problem solving there with the items like when i sacrificed the horse when i had the lock pick to get into the mayor's house you know um and so you know clever use of items is well rewarded as well and actually early game using your money intelligently to try and get some items that are going to help you to progress quickly at the start is uh is really pertinent because your stats are quite bad at the beginning you might wind up spending an awful lot of time just trying to do skill checks that you can't do so 
you know, spending a bit of time to explore and then maybe when you find a shopkeeper or whatever, you know, going back there to get an item that you think might be useful later um, can be really, really useful um, as well. You know, or when I used the medicine and I shouldn't have, or I could have saved it to heal the guard. I mean, I was fortunate enough that it was a two-pass test, but, you know, the using the items in that way can be very, very useful as well. But uh, it is a it is a curiosity because I don't I was just thinking about it and I was thinking the only other competitive storytelling game that I have is um, now near and far the raw and locket game I mean I also have above and below which is I suppose a competitive storytelling game but it's also a little bit of a euro game it's a sort of a tableau builder as well so. It's not as directly storytelling adventure as this or near and far are. They're much more like, you know, heroes going out and exploring and discovering things with storytelling. Um, but near and far is a whole strange victory point system. I think near and far is a very bizarre beast. I would have liked to play more of it, but uh, it's a very hard sell. And I, f I find myself not often wanting to recommend it, quite frankly. Um, whereas this is a much easier sell, I think, just because it's simple and it's quite exciting. But uh, be warned, if you get stuck on a test and you're failing over and over, it can be quite frustrating, especially if you burn through all your effort dice and then you're just getting one back per turn. It's better to peel away and try and find a useful item or maybe go and explore something else and come back. Um, and yeah, there is it is strange playing competitively, especially when someone like sort of jumps into a quest that you're kind of fulfilling and just runs away with it. That can be a bit uh, weird, but... I will give more thoughts in a more formal review later on, I think, once I finish the main campaign. But in the meantime, I hope you've all uh, enjoyed coming on this this um, Destiny's adventure. Yeah, failing in that. If, uh, if you are mad that someone uh, beat you to it and you got the fail state, you can go and get a little outburst table. I've got one over here, you know. And we can watch this flip in sepia quite oh no i wait am i gonna start a new adventure oh we can't look at the tech camera the right camera there we go see oh, how dare you take my destiny from me nah. <laughs> all right that's it folks that's it um it's very hot in here and i have to turn these lights off but i will be back with uh, Chris for more Gloomhaven this week at some point. I think it'll be Tuesday this week because I don't think we can do Wednesday, but it could also be Thursday. I'm not sure, but I think it'll be Tuesday. So make sure you have uh, subscribed to the channel and turned on the bell notifications so you don't miss it. And if you've enjoyed this stream, this is made entirely possible. Well, thanks to actually the very kind review copy from, from uh lucky duck games but also we wouldn't be able to do any of the live stream stuff with all these fancy cameras and nice things going on without the wonderful support of the patreon backers who help keep this channel alive and help keep us speaking freely about our thoughts and what we think of these games so if you are interested in having a say in what we cover on the channel or messaging me directly in a way that i will definitely hear about you can go and check out the patreon page which is linked somewhere on the youtube page but uh, otherwise thank you so much everyone for watching Thanks so much for hanging out, Cohen and Jonathan and Pekka and Heggers. And I hope you all have a lovely rest of your Sunday evening, and a lovely week, and I'll see you all on Tuesday for the next stream. Bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, and Patreon backers, I am learning Ancient Chronicles. Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles. I have heard your votes. I am learning it. It's a 50-page rule book. It might take some time, but I'm doing it. It took me four hours just to get everything out of the boxes, okay? <laughs> Bear with me. Thanks so much. See you all soon. Bye for now.